Well, hi there. This is my dream tarantula. I would say my dream spider, but I really love jumping spiders and black widows, so I'm not sure that's the case. What are your dream spiders, by the way? This is my dream spider because they have a good personality, they're fairly easy to keep, are beautiful, and are impressively large, even if not the largest of all tarantulas. These were among the first tarantulas I ever saw at the Butterfly Pavilion in Westminster, Colorado. They had a Goliath bird eater, the largest of all tarantulas, and a big female Mexican red knee. Even though she wasn't as big as the bird eater, she still captivated me, and I've wanted one ever since. Those orange legs on a dark, heavy body just blew my mind, but I've never had one. So, is this because the Mexican red knee tarantula is not a good pet? And is the Mexican red knee tarantula the best pet spider for you? To answer these questions, we're going to score the Mexican red knee based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Mexican red knee a score of three out of five. This is one of the better tarantulas to hold, but that doesn't make them great to handle. They can bite, though that isn't a major concern. The venom, barring some sort of allergic reaction, isn't a big deal. But I'd rather not have an experience with those fangs, if at all possible. The venom may be no worse than a bee sting, but bees don't have half-inch long stingers that are as thick as pencil lead. Like many New World tarantulas, they do often kick irritating hairs. They may give you a little bit of warning, but not very much. And those hairs are extremely irritating on the skin and much, much worse on the eyes or if inhaled, which could easily happen to me today. But the worst thing about handling tarantulas, and these are no exception, is the risk of having one fall. Generally, tarantulas are slow and deliberate, but they can suddenly bolt. If and when that happens, tarantulas, especially big heavy ones like this, are fairly fragile and can easily be damaged or killed. Every now and then, I'll handle a tarantula to show someone that they don't need to be feared. But it is a risk, especially to the spider. In general, it's better not to handle tarantulas. This is one of the better tarantulas to handle, but it certainly isn't without its risks. When it comes to care, we give the Mexican red knee tarantula a score of 5 out of 5. Desert-dwelling tarantulas are wonderful in the care department. The biggest and really only downside is that they eat insects. That said, they don't need them very often, maybe one or two times a week, and only one or two at a time. But you do need to deal with insects. After that, it's really easy. An enclosure that favors floor space with a good lid, as escapes can be very dangerous for the spider, as well as for Marv and Harry. Give them a lot of substrate in which to burrow. Uh, this should be substrate that will hold a burrow as well and not cave in on them. But don't give them very much room to climb, as falls can be devastating. Then you're going to need some hides and a water bowl. Ensure that the spider can't become trapped in the water bowl or crushed by anything in the enclosure if, say, it digs underneath it. And you can probably get away with not heating the enclosure, but if you need to add heat, use a heat mat on a thermostat and put the heat mat on the side of the enclosure. I've talked about this in many arthropod videos, but arthropods tend to dig to cool down. They are unlikely to live anywhere where the temperature increases the deeper they dig. I mean, they don't dig that deep. And they might not figure this out. This can lead to a dead spider, so don't do this. Care, though, it's really easy. If you need to leave town for a week, fill up that water bowl and go. Don't leave them with a bunch of crickets, though. That can lead to an eaten spider. I'd like to take just a moment to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who have made so many things possible for this channel and to just invite you to check out our Patreon because we have a lot of really, really rad features as our way of trying to pay you back for all that you guys do for us. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Mexican Red Dean Tarantula a score of 5 out of 5. This is a solid spider. Be sure to get one from a breeder you trust, like Great Basin Serpentarium, from whence this spider came. Be careful about molts, as this is a vulnerable time for arthropods, and they're probably going to do great. When it comes to availability, we give the Mexican Red Knee a score of 3 out of 5. You will see these from time to time at pet stores and expos, but straight from a breeder, that's going to be the best. Here with us today is Dr. Joey Muggleston, owner of Great Basin Serpentarium, which is one of the most successful breeders of tarantulas in the United States. 
I wanted to give him a moment to talk to us about some of the techniques required to breed tarantulas without losing your males and about raising young tarantulas. Clint wanted me to cover a couple techniques for breeding tarantulas and not losing the males. So tools of the trade, basically a catch cup, which is just a little deli cup and a ruler. So these are how we, we film all of our pairings at Great Basin Serpentarium. We sit there, we open up the cages, put the males with the females, and then we watch the entire process, not only to document what's happening, but also to ensure that the male escapes. It's not every time that the female tries to kill the male, but every once in a while she'll go and uh, try to eat him instead of mating, or they'll mate and then she'll try to eat him. So we have the ruler, and all we do is we watch, and as soon as it looks like things are going south, we just boop, lock him with the ruler, and we can usually ensure that the male escapes with his life. Then he can recharge and basically go and mate with another female. So when you pair them, the male will get near the female and then they usually do some sort of courtship. And it's gonna vary based on the species. Sometimes it's just a simple drumming that the male will do. And uh, sometimes they'll be drumming along with some shaking, some hand waving. And if the female's receptive, she will sometimes, not always, respond with her own form of drumming and hand waving and shaking back and forth. And if everything works out well, he will approach the female, she'll rear up, and then he will he will then mate with her. So their their pedipalps, their front leg looking things here, the modified mouth parts, on males, they use those to transfer sperm. And so the males will reach under the female and insert little sperm packets, which will then be used to fertilize the eggs at a later date. And then when he's done, the male runs off and like I said, he'll go off into his own area. We put him back in his own cage. He'll spin what's called a sperm web recharge, pick up some more sperm packets, and be ready to mate again. If you want to breed tarantulas, it's uh, sometimes you want to raise your own from a baby, little baby spiderling. And to do so, it's quite easy. You go to different expos, or a lot of, uh, a lot of breeders will sell these. Uh, so we sell baby spiders all the time. Get a little spiderling and raise it up to an adult. That's actually quite an amazing thing to do. You can see it go from about a half inch little spiderling up to, in some cases, a seven, eight inch adult tarantula. Uh, to do so, it's fairly easy. They are typically kept in little vials when they're babies, and then as they grow, you just get a larger cage as, as they get larger. Uh, the one thing to point out, though, is some of these spiders will have hundreds, if not a little over a thousand babies in each egg sac. In the wild, very few of those babies make it to adulthood. In captivity, you're keeping them a little bit better, and you're giving them food and water, make sure that everything's kind of taken care of for them. But there still isn't a 100% survival rate. And so if you do want to raise up a little tiny spiderling to get to an adult tarantula, it's sometimes advisable to get more than one. Get two or three of them. That way, if you have one that, that fails to thrive, you still have a couple that make it to adulthood. So it's better to start off with a couple little babies, particularly of those species that have those huge egg sacs, you know, the ones that have 500 to 1,000 spiderlings in an egg sac. A uh, better way to ensure that you'll have an adult spider um, in the end. Thank you, Joey. That was amazing. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Mexican red knee tarantula a score of four out of five. The spider is expensive, but it's not crazy expensive just expensive. Of course, they live a long time, so per year it's pretty cheap. But this is really the only reason I've never had one myself. Everything else is totally reasonable. The enclosure, the water bowl, the hide, the substrate. You might need a heat mat and a thermostat, but also maybe not, and then you're done. For the record, this is not a suitable enclosure for a Mexican red knee tarantula. I would recommend something considerably larger in terms of floor space, maybe not quite this tall, definitely with a lid as they can climb up the glass and then they would fall out, which could injure them. And then they would crawl out. And then when somebody, you know, invades your house while you're home alone, they'll grab onto your leg and you can reach up on the stair and grab that spider and set it on their face. So that's the only benefit that this enclosure would really provide. This is also not nearly enough substrate for one of these spiders long-term. And this is why overall we give the Mexican Red Knee a score of 4.0 out of 5. The Mexican Red Knee is not necessarily the best pet tarantula, but it is certainly one of the best. If a tarantula is for you, then the color and the price of this tarantula are probably going to be the difference makers. I love the color. The price is why I don't have one. But maybe that needs to change. The good news is tarantulas are one of the easiest animals to care for in large numbers. So. We'll put Great Basin Serpentarium's contact info in the description so you can pick up a few. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. An enclosure that fla flavors. Thank you, Joey. That was amazing. Thank you, Joey. That was acceptable. Thank you, Joey. Get out. I don't know what the heck that was. I, I wouldn't say those things about your family. What's the matter with you? Get a haircut. Oh, hippie. Hippie. <laughs> Too far.
Never stare straight up at a bird and don't blow on a new world tarantula. Here. A little pheromone action. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like rose petals right there. Yeah. It's like rose petals for them. I'm like, oh. At first I was like, no, but now I'm like, no way I'd say no. There we go. Oh my gosh. That's too funny.